Hi loves, welcome back to my channel and to another vlog. I'm actually going to the Galleria just to go to coach. Basically, I really wanted something from their newest collection. Their newest collection is giving, it's eating the girls up. Like, it's doing what it needs to do. That quilted to tabby is a moment, but I really want to see it in person. But not you reversing at the light. It's a Friday. Life has been life in for me. And it just has not been given vlog. I just feel like I've experienced so many changes in a shorter period of time. And cool. it's like I have to go through stuff. I have to process it. And then I can talk about it. I'm in my hoopty, y'all. I'm in my old school car. I was just having this conversation with my best friend the other day. I'm in the car that literally I've had for 10 years. I've never been in a wreck or like any damages. God forbid, I, I hope I'm, I'm never in a wreck. I'm not trying to speak that on my life. But also, I just think about it. This car has not given me any issues, zero. It's had like small things, but everything that has happened to this car over the years has been like a recall, right? And we talking about it in a decade. And we still riding and we riding dirty. But my actual car, I guess, or my other car, my newer vehicle, is in the shop and one of the weirdest things happened so one day i actually i drive that car but i don't drive it as much i give it that it does stay parked a lot more because i'll typically just get in this car because it's just easier and i'm not one that really like cares about like the antics the aesthetics i don't care i'm not a luxury car girly i never have been i don't think that i ever will be it's just not really my vibe i like weird cars i like dependable cars i like boxy cars i like cars Cars that I could do things in that I don't necessarily have to worry about it like I'm, a, I'm an adventurous girl I can't be in no little dainty little door luxury coupe I can't do it I, it's just not for me anyways my car drove it parked it I didn't drive it for maybe like two or three days got in it pulled it out of the garage and boom my dashboard was black not my whole dashboard but like half of it and I was just like Am I tripping? So I stopped the car in the middle of the neighborhood, turn it off, turn it back on. Cause I'm just like, what's happening here? Black. I drive it around. There's nothing wrong with the car. Let me take it to the shop. Let me get an oil change. It was almost time for me to get an oil change anyways. Let me get an oil change. Um, you know, let me put some gas in it. Cause I can't see the oil level. I can't see the gas gauge. I can't see the speedometer because it's black. I take it to the shop. He changes my oil and he's like, I don't know what to do with this. He was like, I've never seen this happened before so i was like okay what can i do and he's like take it to um take it to another shop essentially because i'm trying to avoid going to the dealership the dealership be taxing the dealership act like they paying a note on the car you're not why y'all act like that so i'm really trying to avoid that but long story short it is at another shop that only does electrical but when i get to him he's basically like i ain't ever seen this what and he's like i'm gonna look into it we use a little code reader there's no codes that are showing up that anything is wrong having a dashboard where you can't like i need to see what's going on i need to see if my tire pressure is low you know i need to see what my oil levels are i need to see my fuel range i need to see how much gas i have in the car i need to know how fast i'm going and none of those things were like present and available for me it's just like a weird situation and my car is new so i'm just like the mileage on it is low there's it hasn't been through anything it has experienced nothing but i'm really hoping that he can maybe just like plug something in i want my baby back i want my baby back baby back baby back chilies baby back ribs barbecue sauce that's currently what i'm going through i just feel like life has been life and it could only be one or two things when things go well for like a certain period of time like, and nothing happens it's almost as if something is bound to happen or this could just be like the nudge that i need to move forward i don't know if you ever feel like that because i have been feeling very like stuck almost like complacent like i'm not growing 
and in so many ways for me i just get bored fast i need stimulation and my stimulation can come educationally or it can come through my creativity it's just in so many ways spiritually emotionally like i just need constant growth and i've learned to love that i love that about myself that i'm always so ready to explore and do something different i have noticed that typically when things start to get a little rocky is one or two things either something big is coming like something new something big is coming or this is my nudge to say get on your shit get to doing what it is that you need to do you been slacking so i'm gonna take it with a grain of salt and pray for the best because i need my car and who wants to have a car that you pay on and you're not driving it or it's like sitting in a shop i also need to check my warranty and just see what's going on because if I do have to, I will definitely take it to the dealership. But that is really like my last resort. Despite what's going on, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to do something nice for myself. Give myself what I deserve no matter what. Because we're not going to stay stuck in this place for too long. It's not happening. Good. it says light and crisp and that's exactly what it tastes like and i've been looking for like a white wine that i actually it's not like. a prosecco it is not a prosecco it's leblanc but it's sparkling i, I can't even put a finger on what it tastes like i have no idea 
It has like, I taste a little pear. This gonna be the hit for the summer. It's hot. I'm gonna take this off. I need to put my stuff up. I got my stuff everywhere. Are they crazy? Absolutely. <laughs> Feeling? Good. You wasn't scared? Not at all? When really? It scared, when, it, when it shot up, but after that, it was... It says up to 60 miles per hour. It was not going 60 miles.
this hotel next to the proper and these people at the proper have been protesting all day long singing outside they got drums they got bull horns they have no justice no peace what did she say shame on you proper the people downstairs say they've been doing this for six whole months Way we came together. All right. You need help on the skin, little Miss Taraji. Okay, we headed to Eric Billinger in LA. My favorite R&B artist in his city sold out, baby. Period. We on the way. What was the name of the restaurant? At the Ritz. Corteza? It was delicious. We had to recall to word the plies. And the girl is outside. What's happening here? Rolling loud. matter of I, I feel like having to pack stuff up you know long story short y'all the air is not working yeah you tried to turn it back on after we left the pool nothing happened we've been out to eat and at the concert it still doesn't work so we're moving on this actually happened to me and Nick before in Miami and we got upgraded to like a suite I guess you could say the building has been around since 1922 it's so pretty on, though it's gorgeous if you like heat Girl, it's not even close. 
What? This miss. So in Houston, it's almost 2 a.m. Yeah, 127. So loves, I am back from LA. It was a really good trip, a really fun trip, kind of like more of like a shorter trip. It was actually extremely short. We are talking about like 48 hours. I just really went on the trip for a concert. We went to go see Eric Billinger, singer, songwriter, y'all know the vibes. He actually writes a lot of songs for quite a few people. She asked me months ago, a really nice quick trip that ended up falling on spring break. We went to the rodeo the day before, which was fun. But if you know anything about the Houston rodeo, it is expensive. But I just feel like it's something that Houstonians do every year. Like I remember going to the rodeo as a kid. In high school, I put my artwork in the rodeo and it won. And basically what they do is like you win on a district level and then they'll put it on display at the rodeo but they're actually auctioning it off so you have the opportunity to make money too if somebody buys your artwork they didn't buy it but it's okay they still gave us free tickets and it was just a cool moment to be able to go to the concert go to the carnival and then go inside of the rodeo and actually see my artwork on display like I'm here for it it's a lot of artwork and it's just a big deal in general so for me the rodeo has this like nostalgia to it where I would just never really like miss out on it if I have the opportunity to so this year I went to my first cook-off which was like club rodeo I was not expecting the cook-off to be like that I thought that it was going to be just what it says like the cook-off where every restaurant and food vendor kind of has like taste testing but no it was like huge private tents liquor and when we got there there was no more food and we went to several tents Luckily, when we went, it fell on a day that I was in recovery. I had just gotten over being sick and my body was weak and I really couldn't last that long anyway. So I was kind of excited that the food was gone. Like that hour and a half, two hours that I got, it was perfect. I came right back home, took that makeup off and got back in the bed because my body was like, girl, I don't know what you thought you was going to do. And the rodeo is a lot of walking too. It's really spread out. It's just a huge venue. But here I am, I'm back and I'm struggling. I really am. I have so many emotions inside of me right now and none of them are positive. I hate feeling like that. I feel like the car situation, it just kind of amplifies it. I still don't have my car back and she's actually at the dealership now. So I feel like the last time we talked about this, I was trying to get her fixed without going to the dealership. Every single person has told me the same thing. And when I get to the dealership, they're telling me the same thing. I know they're not lying, but it's just the fact that I have to get it fixed. And it's one of those situations where people have never seen it. It's just mind blowing over it. I'm so confused. I'm so stressed. I have anxiety about it. I really don't want to pay for it. I really don't. A huge inconvenience. And then on top of that, I feel like every single day since that has happened, I get some type of bad news. Like where is the positivity? Can I just get a phone call or a text message about something good? Tell Tell me something happy. Tell me something light. Tell me something that's like free. I cannot stand getting phone calls about bad news, especially when I'm out of town. Y'all, that is like the ultimate pet peeve. It really grinds my gears. It just does something to me. It's just, but I also like try to process it. And then it's like, how inconsiderate. 
Why would you do that? And what can I do? It revs things up in me, especially if you know that I'm traveling. It almost feels like an ambush. I don't like that. And I'm not saying that that's the case. I don't think that that's the case. But you know, I have feelings. And what's even crazier is that I keep seeing my angel numbers. But I don't understand because my angel numbers basically mean that I'm on the right track, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. How, Sway? How could that possibly be? And I know I'm just venting just because I feel the way that I feel. And in life, we go through stuff. But it sucks. I am very well aware that trouble don't last always. I grew up in a black church household. I know all of the things, but it this feels new. It feels different. It's certain things that I just have not experienced before. And I am mind blown. So, and this is not just a car issue. That's not so much more. For me, I try to avoid saying too much when I be emotional or just angry in general. Only because I am aware that hurt people hurt people. And I know that when I talk to people, when I am upset in any way, form, or fashion, hurtful things happen. It's just inevitable because we project. We're human. So for me, I do try to avoid speaking out on things immediately. Like I try to process it, get my words together, and then say what I need to say. But the thing about that, I spend so much time being considerate of other people that my emotions get suppressed. And then what do I end up doing? Does that make sense? So it's like I'm always torn. Like, do I just pop off, say what I need to say, get it off my chest, like, and I care? Or do I continue to do what I be doing? I think for right now, I just have to focus on myself. I am under the weather, but not in a physical form, but more so mentally and emotionally. So one thing that I am happy that I did not do before I left was unbox my coach because y'all know I was a coach. I purchased something from the newer collection and I haven't unboxed it. And I'm so appreciative because I didn't ask her to do this, but the sales associate wrapped it up. She was like, I'm gonna wrap this up for you really nice. Just in case you want to do an unboxing. Babe, you felt the vibes. She just knew that it would be like re-gifting myself. So I haven't opened a bag. I haven't seen a bag. It's been sitting, waiting, like open me, unbox me, use me. I might put it on. Maybe I'll put on an outfit because that's another thing I just haven't been doing. I haven't really been getting dressed. I've barely been wearing makeup, even going outside. And that's crazy because I am a social person. I have not been outside at the park or like taking a walk, put my hands in some dirt, put my feet in some grass. That might, I need to ground myself back to reality. That's just what it feels like. I have not been outside, outside of, outside, outside, outside of events or traveling. I don't even put on clothes. That's sad. Now, I do love these pajamas. I have them in two colors. I wear them often. They are super comfortable, super cozy. So, you know. But let's just go and unbox this bag. Let me show y'all what it looks like, what I think about it. Because so I actually have a couple of things, low key, hot key. So I'll just show you guys this glow recipe. This one's a goodie. So they launched the niacinamide Q drops which is a spinoff of their Dew Drops. Now, the Dew Drops have been out for a couple of years now, and I do feel like they're somewhat of like a household staple. Everybody really knows about these. Let me show you. Because they sent both, the Dew Drops and the Hue Drops. So these are the, the Dew Drops. What's so crazy is that my nieces were here yesterday. I actually did my nieces here yesterday, so I spent the bulk of the day with them, which was really nice. But the Hue Drops have color. And that's what I really wanted. I said that about my niece because they raid my skincare. And she took one of these. The Lord will provide, okay? Because she took one and I got another one. I'm super excited about this. I saw these on TikTok and I couldn't wait to try it. And they said like this cute little light. That's pretty, y'all. Look at that. Here we go. Coach. Are you guys excited about it? I am. And when I say wrapped up well, is this a box inside of here? Oh, well it is. Reduce, reuse, and recycle though. This is great for gifts. Okay, she did her thing. Let me actually give you a true unboxing. Thank you for shopping at Coach. So everything's in here for sure. I actually got two things. So I got the bag. This is the quilted tabby. And I want to say the color is moss or something like that. If not, I'll just leave it. You know I'm going to leave it linked either way it goes. But look at this bag. 
Yeah. We all know they do Napa leather on these. And Coach, in general, their leather is... To me, not only affordable, but it's also really nice because it's so neutral. I wear a lot of green anyways. And I loved the Coach logo in leather. So it's like leather on leather. Also silver detailing. I'm getting into silver and I do a lot of mixed metals now. So just having detail, silver detailing on a bag is phenomenal. Silver and green go beautifully together also, as do go, But sometimes you just want to wear silver. There is a flap here. I feel like this flap would probably be like for a wallet. And then you have a main pocket. This does fit a phone. It fits. I'm trying to tell y'all. Boom. And there's plenty of room for it. So this is definitely my kind of like day-to-day -day type of bag. I can fit literally whatever I need in there. And then on the back, there is this pocket. So this also makes for just like an easy... You know, one, two. It's sticking out a little bit, but my case is a little bulky, but it definitely fits. It'll work. And this is easy access for sure. Now, in store, if you get it in store, they do have the tags where you can get like something pressed on them. So I did. And I just got Lee in Texas. It's beautiful. Babes, the details are here. It does close pretty easily. Smooth, buttery leather. And personally, I just love the color. Now, the only other thing that's in this bag is this, which is a chain. It's a bag chain. I have so many other bags that the straps are interchangeable. And it's really hard for me to find silver chains that I like. I feel like they are end up being a little too shiny. This one is not. It's like a brushed silver, but it's a true silver. And it was the details for me. I was also thinking this could be a necklace. Hear me out. So yes, cute little bag chain. I could just snap it together. And I got a whole chunky chain necklace. Take it off, put it on a bag. Take it off, add it to a belt. You know what I've done several times, especially recently, is take my really chunky chains like this and make a bracelet. It works. It does have some weight to it, but it's not insanely heavy. And to me, it was also the details because it's a chain, but it emulates leather. So there's these little notches like all the way across it. So that was really it. That was all that I got from Coach. I am very, very happy with this purchase. I did purchase something else. Before this, I got the Jacques Mousse bag, the silver one. And it was only because my husband was actually on the wait list for this or the wish list. I wanted this bag. I feel like I mentioned it to him maybe like six months ago. And I honestly just put it to the side. In my brain, I was like, I'm never going to get it. Jacques Mousse had launched like two different collections and a collab. In my mind, he was not going to restock the bag. Lo and behold, my husband called me. He was like, the bag you want is back in stock. I was like, what you talking about? Please tell me. Sends me the link. The bag is in stock. And something in my spirit just told me, just go ahead and get the bag. He told me to get the bag too. I would basically be mad at myself for missing out again. So now, although beautiful, she does not travel well. Which is interesting. Maybe she does though because I got stopped with her on the way back from LA. Thought that I had like a baton or like a wand in my bag and it was, it's the handle. So he stopped me and he was like, what is this? And I was just like, I don't know what you're talking about. When he kept saying, you got like a wand or a baton in here? I was like, no. So he's like, okay, I got to search it. I'm like, go for it. Go for it. He pulls the bag out. He's like, oh, this is a nice bag. And I was like, it's a good bag. And he was like, you might just want to keep this for like a home thing. And I was like, mm, I could kind of see that. Just keep that in mind. I guess if you have this bag or you plan on getting this bag, that it might not be as travel friendly. But they didn't stop me leaving in Houston. So maybe Houston was just like, I don't care. She come through here all the time. And just real quick before we close out the vlog, shout out to the good, good girlfriend, Janika Masia for the plug on these bags. We were just talking about bags. I got these from Marshalls. I know she said go to TJ Maxx, but I went to one TJ Maxx and I found nothing. And what I was not about to do was keep driving around to every single TJ Maxx. One day I just popped into Marshalls because in my brain I was like, they're the same thing. And I found these two. And she is really right about the quality. They are not real leather, but Mm, you can't tell. They have the purple, 
or this lilac color. Definitely don't have anything in lilac. And then it's spring, so I'm like, mm. I don't know if spring has started yet, but it's almost here. So I thought that this would be really, really cute. I do actually really like purple too. It looks good on my skin. And then this pink, which crazily, it's like a dusty pink. Picked up this one. I also wear a lot of pink and I just like pink in general. I have on pink right now. So these were the two that I picked up. The only other color that I saw was the blue. And it was like a baby blue. I, did, I just didn't really, it didn't do anything for me. We're gonna end out the vlog here. Make sure that you guys check out the description box for any of the links, any of the things that we've chatted about. Keep me in your prayers. And while you're at it, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Give me a second once I get my life together. I'll definitely be back with some more vlogs, especially if you guys like this kind of content. But for now, I'll see you in the next one.